So today we're gonna to be doing a few random things. Not sure if I'm gonna get it all today on video, if I'm gonna to have to extend the video out another couple days to finish it. But first thing we're gonna be doing here is starting up the 6-7 Cummins over here, the, the you know, your truck sitting over there. But then also, we might get to take a look at the new wheels and tires for the 6-7 regular cab Cummins that we're also working on right now. And uh, basically just turning it into like the sickest, meanest regular cab daily that I could envision. I'll show you later, but it really is a really great setup for that truck. I think it's gonna look super stellar and sick. Anyways, let's get this truck fired up. Oh yeah, and mark your calendars for June 5th and follow the YouTube channel for Prosperity Driven Apparel Co. and follow the LNP underscore speed Instagram page. I'll leave it at that. Also, big news for the first gen Cummins that we have at the paint shop right now. That truck is not yet done, but it's almost done. I did talk to the painter, Miguel, yesterday and he said it should be two to three weeks at most and that truck should be done with paint so then we also have to move the truck over to interior to get the interior work we got to put the dash in and then put the carpet in and then i'm probably going to take it up to get the headliner done and the new seats all holstered and all ready to go get the seats worked on so that they function the way they should and all that stuff but it's going to be it's going to be really sick super excited about that and really looking forward to seeing that truck done and then we're also going to have the drivetrain looked at for the first one just to make sure because i think there was uh just a little bit of a vibration in the drive shaft of that truck so we want to get that looked at other than that that truck's getting closer and closer to being done it's been a long project but i wanted that i wanted that truck that would really say a statement when it's done and like people would be like wow i see so much potential in a lot of these other rough looking old trucks because i saw what he did with a four thousand dollar first gen parts truck that somebody that's what they used it for and turned it into an absolutely beautiful immaculate truck and we're going to go over how much it costs to do that and all that other stuff so stay tuned that's going to be epic and that's coming up really soon we got the 20 foot car hauler loaded up and we're actually on our way to go to menards the place i dread right now uh, just because we need to pick up a pallet of concrete i'm going to get 20 bags of concrete maybe more but I think 20 20 to start out with and I'll figure out if I need more because I'm gonna try to concrete my chicken coop by myself if I get some concrete and rock I think I can do it to where it makes sense and it'll actually work out pretty well this might be my brother right here he's coming to work for me whether he's on his way to come work for me anyways I'm gonna go pick up some stuff I gotta pick up some rock just some bags of rock I'm not gonna get like a ton for the inside of the coop just some bags of rock and then I'm gonna pick up some concrete bags some mixing bags and it's right by a hose, right by our barn. So I'm gonna try to do it in sections, like a small, you know, five foot by five foot section or six foot by six foot section, just to where I can reach across and smoothen it out and then move on from there. The only reason I'm doing the concrete in the chicken coop anyways, isn't to look fancy and cool. It's so that when it comes to shoveling manure year round, you have a concrete base to scrape it off versus like it just turns to mud and it's disgusting and then you don't know where the bottom is so you just keep digging and digging a mud pit in the chicken coop we used to do that as kids well i used to do that as a kid uh, for my mom and dad's chickens and it was just not fun it was messy it was gross um, so they eventually got theirs concreted and once they did that i'm like if i have a chicken coop i'm doing this because this this sucks any other way so we're gonna get this done and hopefully it's not too terrible and uh, we can make it happen and we are back we've got our load of gravel and concrete this is probably the dumbest way to load this trailer i will tell you because the truck looks like it's super squatted that's because they put the pallet on the front of the trailer instead of between the axles they didn't even really ask me they just said here's your stuff and dropped it on there and uh that was it um but anyway so luckily we only had to go about five miles so we're gonna get this unloaded and start to work on the process of concreting part of this chicken coop over here. To be honest with you guys, I've never done this before. I've used concrete mix stuff before for like using, you know, concreting posts in the ground, stuff like that, but never like an actual like concreting like slab. But this is just a small little, uh, what's up Scout? This is just a small little area, so I'm gonna show you. We got the ducks and the chicks having a good old time. The ducks playing in their little water dish in there. Then in the inside here is where we're gonna be working on concreting it today. And what my main goal is gonna be is essentially like, he keeps nudging me. My main goal is going to be obviously lining the edge of this whole area with two by four and then essentially running a two by four also right here across the front and then just dumping a thin 
you know, let's say two inch layer of gravel through the whole bottom. Within that two by four, you know, box that's gonna be outlining along all this framing, do a board across the center here, so it's cut in half, and then I'm going to do like the back half, and then I'm gonna do the front half separately, that way I can actually pour the gravel, pour the concrete, smoothen it out, and then do the front section. Otherwise, I feel like with this long distance, if there's an imperfection, I'm not gonna be able to reach and take care of it and fix it with that kind of a distance. So we're gonna to get to working on this right now, and uh, I'll just show you some little steps throughout the prep and finishing of the product. But other than that, I'm just gonna to get to work on this. There's not really anywhere to put my camera, so I'm just gonna to have to uh, come back and show you the progress as we go. I don't have to do so much weed trimming though around this thing because uh, he takes care of it. So we are actually about to be working on the regular cab again today and we're gonna go over why we have that truck back so soon and why it doesn't have the leather in it yet. So here is the six speed. For those of you who have not seen the truck yet, it's our 2015 6.7 Cummins with the six speed transmission. The manual, of course. Let's tell you why there's no leather in the truck yet. The truck was scheduled for leather. Leather was ordered. Leather was shipped. And originally, we were just having issues with the COVID, you know, scam delays because, you know, it's it's dangerous to have more than 50% of your workers in a facility at a time now and stuff like that. But now what we're dealing with is people senselessly rioting and destroying cities and businesses and fulfillment centers and crap like that. Let's just say this. It's in the name of a good cause, but the people that are actually causing the problem, not all people, but the people that are actually doing the destructive, horrible things are doing it for personal gain and benefit, not for a cause. Just so we have that clear. Apparently now the shipping on the leather for this interior was delayed, so the truck sat up there for a week. He's like, I don't even know when to expect it anymore. He's like, it should have been here. He's like, but now we're dealing with, they're like, oh, you know, there's so much crap going on in California, which is where it's supposed to ship out of, and, and all this other crap, so yeah. And I know there's probably absolutely nobody watching my videos that are part of all the rioting crap going on, but like, people, are you serious? How, okay, everybody understands, there's nobody that's against the people that think that what happened to that guy was wrong, okay? If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Nobody's against you on that. But destroying cities and businesses and homes from people that are completely unrelated to the issue does not help, and you're causing more havoc for everybody that is completely unrelated to the actual issue. That's why the leather's not done yet, and the truck's back with no leather, so I basically told the guy that I was going to be picking the truck up, doing some more work to it, and then just when it does show up, give me a call, I'll run the truck up there and drop it off. We're gonna work on installing some new wheels and tires on this truck right now. Here are the new wheels and tires for the six-speed manual Dodge. Oh man, they, they, they're they awesome. So we went with 22 by 12 American Force wheels and some 33 by 1450 R22 Fury Country Hunter MT tires. So we went with a little bit wider tire than wheel and the reason I wanted to do that is so when you look down the side of the truck, you see a meaty sidewall and not just like rim hanging out past the tire. If you know what I'm saying, that's just my preference. Well, everybody, here it is with the new American Force wheels on it. It looks so, so stinking good. 22 by 12, but we did a 33 by 14 50 wide Fury Country Hunter tire. Again, the whole purpose of that for me, this is just my style. This is what I like. I'm not the type of wheel and tire combo guy to where like when you're looking down the side of the truck right here, you see the rim hanging out farther than the tire. I like it to where when you're looking down the body line of the truck, all you see is rubber 
until you go even further and further and then you can kind of see the dish but it's not the rim hanging out i'm not really a big fan of that not to mention it's really not great for uh well keeping your wheels in good shape i mean you can curb these too if you hit a curb but i'm saying it's just way more prone to happen when your rim's completely hanging out and you have no sidewall protection to grab that curb to climb over it versus just completely ride the curb with your rim which is what you're more likely to do if your rim's completely hanging out i believe it's a negative 40 offset not a 44 truck is level two and a half inches in the front here's a side view looks so stinking good got the five percent tent on the truck oem sport ram tail lights with the retrofitted wiring kit because of course this truck didn't come with those it's an slt we paint match the bumpers paint match the mirrors smoked cab lights on the truck but we kept amber lighting in the cab lights because i'm not really a fan of the leds that always fail on you we've got the sport oem style headlights on the truck 2018 ram like limited slash longhorn style grill and then we did all color matching except for the ram in the middle it looks so good this truck beforehand it was a good looking truck don't get me wrong i'm not going to say it, it was a, an ugly truck but it just didn't look great you guys can call it ugly beforehand if you want i'm not going to say it was ugly because i know that there's people that would have loved it the way it was with the halogen headlights you know just a standard incandescent tail lights and the foggy cab lights and the big cross grill to me it just did not look good and the big old chrome bumpers i feel like this is just the better look for this truck now of course the truck's not done there's still some things that we need to do especially with the interior there's a couple of things i am considering putting a new head unit setup slash navigation system in the truck and i'm gonna save that for another video but it should be here any day and let's just say that it's going to really like especially once these seats are done with that black leather with that charcoal stitching and crap and it's gonna look like a limited you know seat with the perforated leather and everything. That's where we're at. Looks really good. Now, if you haven't done so yet, you are down to your last 24 hours to enter to win this truck plus $5,000 cash. So if you haven't done so yet, head on over to lmpgear.com, spend $5 or more, and every $5 more that you spend gets you another 20 entries towards winning this truck plus the $5,000. But that giveaway ends on June 4th at midnight which is tomorrow. Grab your entries because this giveaway is about to be over. And now I'm going to show you guys the progress that we got on that chicken coop concrete work. It's not like perfect, but it's going to serve its purpose just fine. Of course, right now we've got the chicks out here and they really have tore this up since we put them in there two days ago. I mean, this is what they do in 48 hours. I mean, they're tearing this up, but man, those ducks are going fast. Here's where we're at so far now. I understand that it's of course not like, um, let's say your generic concrete like sidewalk or something that's like not gonna have a single piece of gravel showing or anything like that, but it's gonna do fine for what we're trying to use it for, which is just essentially making it easier so that when we do have to pitchfork out manure once it layers up because that's kind of what it does it kind of like makes like these weird layers because the chickens walk all over it all day and it's really just watery so it kind of dries in layers but we just want a base so we can scrape it off without basically just digging into a mud pit and then just water flooding out the coop and crap like that you see what i'm saying that's the main purpose of this is so the coop doesn't flood out it doesn't turn into a soup puddle when we have to get manure out of here. But what we are going to do is I'm going to see if I can find some kind of like paste, like a cement paste that's not got so much gravel content in it. Because I don't know why that stuff had so much gravel content, but it just did. And then just like smoothing it over because it gave me a little bit of wiggle room. My brother and his friend did this stuff. They gave me a little bit of wiggle room to where I can fill in the small cap over the top of all this. Make it a little bit more flush than what it is right now. So we're going to see how that goes. Maybe I'll go and actually pick some of that up right now and see if I can whip something up and get this done. Here's the pile of materials I picked up from Menards to finish the inside of the coop and the outside of the coop. OSB board so we can finish the walls inside so that the chickens are not pooping inside the walls and <laughs> decaying the wood on the inside of the framework. And then there is some concrete mix. It's, it's a little bit different than the first stuff that we bought, so hopefully it's a little bit better. Less rock, more actual like cement so hopefully that uh that works a little bit better believe it or not i could pull this trailer through the shop and park a truck and trailer all hooked up in through the shop it's a tight fit but if you're pulling straight in it wouldn't be so hard it's just a little bit of a pain backing and then you could just pull through and then loop around and then drive out through the arena
So here's the update on the chicken house. So we've got this wall's all boarded up, the back wall's boarded up, this wall we're still boarding up, we've already got birds nesting in here. Um, in terms of the concrete, we're not finished with it. We got basically like the super cheap rocky base concrete, which kind of sucked because it's just like super, super rocky content. It's supposed to be like this uh, all purpose, you know, pre-mixed, whatever crap, but it's just got so much stinking rock in it. I mean, it was like two bucks a bag. I'm, I just asked for concrete and they're like, oh, okay, here you go. Still a little bit more to fill in over top. So what we did was I bought a bunch of better stuff that was actually about three times as expensive to do the outside that's not supposed to have so much rock in it. And what I'm gonna do is take like a full bucket or two and just kind of dump it all in here and just kind of smoothen it out to fill in. Cause you can kind of see there's still like realistically another half inch at least, um, some spots an inch to where like it needs filled in to be flush with the two by fours that are framed in the, you know, on the ground. Um, so we're gonna try to get that and just smoothen it out. But again, it's really just to give a rocky base so that, you know, it doesn't flood in here and then turn into a mud pit when we have chickens in here. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to enter to win this truck because it is your final notice before this giveaway is gone to win this truck plus $5,000. Stay tuned, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe if you're new. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Guys, this is your last reminder to get your entries in towards winning this truck plus $5,000 cash. So what are you waiting on? Grab your entries to win this truck because right now is our best deal. $5 gets you 20 entries and this giveaway ends on June 4th at 11.59 p.m. So hit the link. Grab your entries, win a truck.